Good day. Welcome to Saxion, to this webinar. My name is Davide and I'm a student assistant at the International Office. So, during this webinar, I will talk with uh, three, stu uh, three teachers from the uh, international uh, business-related subjects here at Saxion. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi Davide, my name is Remco Vida and I'm the head of the International Academic Affairs at the International Business School of Saxion. Thank you. Hello, my name is Janine Hertog and I am a course director of the International Human Resource Management Program. My name is Robert Slot. I am program director from International Finance and Accounting and also a lecturer from Management Accounting. Thank you. Welcome everyone. So during this webinar, you will have the chance to ask all your questions about the different programs and they will be answered live. How are we going to structure the webinar? So we will have uh, three separate sections talking individually about uh, the specific programs. Uh, and then in the end, we will see if we understood correctly the difference and the, sp and the highlights of the programs. So we are going to start with uh, Remco talking about international business. To do this, we will first watch a short video on conscious business. So, we have just watched this beautiful video about conscious business. Anko, can you tell us something more about like conscious business? What it really is in your work? Okay. Um, within our international business uh, studies program, we consider conscious business to be an important element that students should be aware of. Until now, we've always focused on uh, the business models that were more or less idolizing, maximizing profit. And we want students also to be aware of the fact that every decision that they take will have a certain level of consequence so that they understand that every decision uh, has a downside as well. Uh, so for instance, as in shown in the video, um, if you make sure that the people producing the products will have a better life and you uh, will take less profit, it's still okay. So we want to create a new generation of entrepreneurs that are more socially aware and more socially active in terms of improving uh, the world as, as a whole instead of only improving their own situation. Okay. Do you think companies are already accepting uh, towards this uh, business model? It's an interesting question, David. Um, I, I think that nowadays students are more interested in having a certain purpose in life. Um, uh, so it's not so much about whether the companies are accepting it. I think we are now creating a new generation of entrepreneurs, like I mentioned. So they are later on in a position to be able to, to change certain things. So we shouldn't wait for the companies to change, but I think we should create a new generation that is more or less initiating a change. Yeah, I was noticing myself, for example, that now we pay much more attention to our recy towards recycling or like buying fair trade. Uh, so this is how we are going to, um, to teach to your students or to, to, yeah, to well, nurture them. Exactly. We always try to focus on the win-win-win situation. So not just a win-win, but in this case, there should be three people 
pr profiting or benefiting from it. Uh, so in this case, the people buying the product, but also the ones producing the product, and of course, the organization that is selling the product or the service. Okay. And then I guess that uh, this focus is very, very international, right? It's an international focus since um, the number of students that we receive every year, um, the number of international students is still increasing. Uh, so we have a lot of international students amongst um, uh, the students in our first, second and third and fourth year, uh, which means that um, we do need to, to take into consideration different cultures, but also uh, the different ways of doing business in different countries. Uh, so yeah, there is an international focus um, okay. also from the conscious business point. So can you estimate how many different nationalities you have in your program? At the moment we have over 35 different nationalities among students in our program and over 12 different nationalities uh, as far as the staff is concerned. Okay. Nice, that's very interesting. And then you mentioned that um, there are a lot of international students and so do they also have the chance to, once they come to the Netherlands, to study uh, maybe th for their minor or their do their internship or thesis abroad? Yep. In, in our program it's important that if you do international business that you spend as often as possible a, a semester abroad. Yep. So in our program you can spend uh, three, me three semesters abroad uh, meaning you can do your work placement abroad, you can do your study semester abroad, and you can do your thesis or dissertation abroad. Uh, and we do stimulate that. So the students with a Dutch nationality have to go abroad for at least one semester. Mm -hmm. All the other nationalities can go abroad if they want to. Uh, but imagine if you start working later on uh, at an international company, that the international companies would be more interested in people that have spent at least one, two, yeah. but preferably three semesters abroad. Mm -hmm. So it's a unique opportunity in our opinion, uh, to gain this international no knowledge or experience while you're still studying. And I heard there was a little bit of confusion uh, among prospective students. Can uh, international students also go back to their home country for their internship or thesis? They can, but there is a limitation. They can only spend uh, two semesters uh, in a country where the mm -hmm. spoken language is um, equal to the native tongue. So they can do go back, but uh, there is a certain limitation. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. And uh, I also imagine that you interact a lot with uh, with students from uh, from the program. And could you say like what is the um, what is the highlight or the thing they like the most about the program? I think what students do like, uh, I'm sure about that, is that we do have this um, uh, we do have a type of education where students from day one are in close contact with real companies. Um, so our type of education is uh, structured in that way that we have. Um, a theme or a project and the project is based on a real problem of a real company and the students need to solve that within a time frame of approximately um, uh, 14 to 16 weeks um, and that would mean that they would interact with people from the business with teachers working groups and learn to divide tasks um, and work as a team uh, with different cultural backgrounds with different languages which yeah. is very interesting but it's hands-on, it's demand-driven, and I think that's the key uh, to our type of education. And how do international students cope with the cultural difference? So, so not just for coming in the Netherlands, but also working, as you said, with different cultures. True, that, that's a, a huge challenge, especially in the beginning, because uh, we have people with yeah, different backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, uh, meaning that the ones that are used to working in a very strict or ordered manner, have to get used that they are now all of a sudden working with people with a more like a Latin American background or people from an Asian um, a type of country. So getting to know these differences from the beginning is good because now you're still in an educational environment so it's okay to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes uh, in order to be, be, be well prepared as soon as you start on the labor market after four years. So they, they do enjoy that but it's, it is challenging especially in the beginning. Okay, yeah. and also uh, there are you have uh, three different tracks uh, for the program, right? True. So it might be a little bit hard to make a choice. So, so um, for yeah, for international students, maybe they used just do one economics or international business program in their home country, and now they find three options. So yeah. what to choose, and what are the differences between the differences between them, and uh, what is your advice, maybe? Okay. Um, let, let me assure the students that they don't have to choose prior to the moment that they come to Saxion. Mm -hmm. So they will choose their specialization or track at the end of the first semester, so after uh, two periods of education, uh, which makes it easier because during the first two quarters we give them an introduction on the, the differences between the, the specializations or tracks that we offer. 
so they have a better idea okay this is more suitable for me or not um, so that's I think ideal for students they don't know yet what they want and therefore we give them a short introduction and after one semester they will decide what their specialization will be like uh, and we do have this language track we do have um, an entrepreneur track and we do have a track on uh, technology and innovation uh, languages speaks for itself uh, and you can choose from Dutch Spanish German or French uh, and as far as the language with, with the language sorry do you start with a basic level or do you uh, suppose that students have a prior knowledge good question uh, as far as the languages Dutch and uh, Spanish are concerned uh, concert we start from scratch and as far as the French and uh, German language is concerned we start at intermediate level okay yeah, that's very important. I it's think, it's to important. Yeah, advanced, and, yeah. and once again, the students that uh, maybe decide to go for the language track, um, we will give them like an orientation module in the first semester to see whether or not they have the required level. So they know before the start of the specialization whether or not they can live up to our expectations as far as the level is concerned. And uh, as far as the technology and innovation is concerned, it's on the cross section of business and technology so that mm -hmm. they understand the new developments in technology that could be used in a business environment and as far as the uh, entrepreneurship is concerned it's more or less focusing on running your own business or running a business for someone else okay yeah very interesting so based on your uh, future goal or your also your personalities you will have uh, uh, your your favorite track to choose from True. the one that fits best like uh, yeah your future actions also yeah okay um, thank you. And is there anything else that you would like uh, to add about the international business program, maybe? I think w what is important for students to, to, to know is that in our type of education, it's, it's very hands-on. You have the opportunity to go abroad for quite some, some time, one and a half years max. Um, and we do also offer at the end of the program the possibility to, to participate in a so-called program, cross-border talent program where students will start doing a, um, um, a final assignment and once they've completed the final assignment uh, for a company in the area of the Dutch-German border, uh, they can continue working afterwards. So once they've graduated, they will also have their first real job, uh, which is unique. Uh, no other university is offering something similar. Uh, and it's, uh, it's ideal for students that if they want to get the first job in this region, uh, they can stay at the company, <laughs> implement the, resu the results of the research and uh, yeah, automatically start with the first job. Oh, okay, that's really interesting. Okay, thank you. The reason I decided to study this far from home is actually because of my program. It's International Human Resource Management. It's not available in my home country and uh, it's unique in Europe in uh, such a practical way, like at Saxon, it was available only here in the Netherlands. I think it's not a good idea, but a great idea to study abroad. Uh, because uh, when you go abroad you actually drop all the stereotypes uh, on, on the ideas you have on different cultures. You meet people uh, from China, from Japan, from Korea or even from America and you will study with them so you will start already entering the intercultural environment that is really beneficial for your future work. So thinking about the opportunities that I had here in the Netherlands at Saxion uh, I have to think of course of my study program and I had a lot of opportunities to develop uh, my theoretical knowledge and put it into practice. I can think of the practical quarter when uh, we cooperated together with uh, IKEA or uh, we had to recruit a manager for um, a medical company. So this is something that never happened to me before in my previous uh, very theoretical study in Italy for example. And also, uh, life-wise, here in the Netherlands, meeting people from different cultures and having the, having the chance also uh, to work for the university and being in contact constantly with like, uh, a huge amount of people and sharing stories and experiences is something that really gives me a lot of energy. When you move to a different uh, country, uh, of course, you may have a cultural shock because uh, the culture is totally different. You think of the Netherlands and Italy, like they may not have anything in common or not that much. So I had a cultural shock and the best way for me was just to get along as much as I could with my classmates and just go out together, spend some time together, have dinner and then uh, also find help uh, from, uh, from my study counselor or like uh, 
all the people around me that actually supported me uh, with this. My goal for the future. Um, what I really would love is to first work for uh, a big company uh, where uh, I could develop myself further, I could grow, uh, learn new things uh, and just develop my career, uh, thrive. And then uh, maybe in like uh, 15 or 20 years, um, go to a smaller company uh, where I can use that knowledge and have an impact on the local community. My studies are helping me very much to achieve this goal um, because I get support in any phase of, uh, of my education. It's uh, uh, the theoretical knowledge combined with the practical knowledge and the assignments that we have that really uh, makes us enter uh, the business world with business cases and also the help from my academy to find an internship, for example, uh, in a company that actually fits the purpose of my study. I am now here with uh, Janina, co-director of the International Human Resource Management Program. And we have just watched a video with uh, some highlights of uh, how the life of an HR professional looks like. Uh, so, uh, what do you think, Janina? Yeah, I think it's interesting that um, the working field is very diverse. There are many ways in which you can be useful as an HR professional, but it's always about work and people-related problems, and you have to be quite creative in solving those issues. Uh, and many questions arise in, in business, like uh, how do I get my people most productive? Uh, what do you do when there is an empty space, office space, and everybody works from home? Is it still possible to get a team spirit if everybody works remotely? Um, but also other things like when there's conflict in the workplace or managers don't get along with employees. Those are big issues that uh, have an influence on people's happiness or the productivity within a company. And as an HR professional, um, you're invited to uh, find creative solutions to those issues. Yeah, because uh, even people have a huge impact on the business and also on the profitability, right? Exactly. I think business is a l in a large part about the people. And people are complex and very interesting, I think. Um, so studying that, figuring out what makes them tick and how to make them very productive and happy in the workplace is tremendously important to the business. So is it correct to say that uh, having the right talents and in the r them in the right place is directly linked to the strategy of the organization? Absolutely. So you have to, as an HR professional, think along with management about the uh, strategy of the organization and how that fits or actually with the influence on that strategy uh, for the people. So if you want very creative people, what does that mean? Uh, if you want to be a creative business, now what does it mean for the people? You have to hire certain types of people and develop them and inspire them if you really want to get the most out of them. But indeed, it's also not, not easy at all to manage uh, your employees and the company, right? So we have here uh, an interactive case on the side. And uh, yeah, would you like to comment on that? Exactly. I'd like to go over a case with you, a case that we actually use in our classes. Um, just take a look at it and, um, and think about what your answer would be. So what would you do in this case? Hmm. Well, it's really complicated because um, yeah, this person was convicted for murder, right? And has a gap, e has gap of 15 years, so which is quite a lot. So maybe this person doesn't really remember even how to do his job. Uh, but uh, so yeah, there are many factors like among the stakeholders, so like customers, uh, uh, the community, and uh, so maybe your, um, yeah, like many other uh, people involved in the organization, also shareholder, that they will influence also the, uh, the profitability of the, of the business. Uh, I would actually mm, probably hire this person because uh, we don't really know what, why this person was convicted for murder. Okay, so that matters to you, what the reason was why that person was convicted. Um, 
I guess somehow it does, but also it was like 15 years ago, so probably the person changed. Okay, so people are capable of change, you're saying? I would say so. And you believe in second chances then? Probably, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I like how you approach this topic. Like, it's, it's really much about what you believe and what you value and how you want to uh, interact with people and, and whether you indeed want to give people second chances. So it says a lot about you as a person with, with all that you stand for. But it's also very important, of course, to look at the business side of things. Like, what is it going to do indeed to our uh, stakeholders? Um, what is it going to do to our uh, other employees? Are mm -hmm. people going to be upset if you hire an, uh, an ex-murderer, an ex-convict, a murderer? Um, Maybe yes. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and then also, of course, the, the, the legal parts of it. Are you even allowed to, to uh, discriminate based on these things? Like, what are your options even if you look at it from a legal standpoint? Uh, so I think that's, that's something we, uh, there's no easy answer to this. There's no yeah. one answer. Thank you. It's, uh, it's something just to think about. I'm a bit confused myself, actually. Yeah. That's okay. I don't know yeah. what to answer specifically. A yeah. bit of confusion is good for, <laughs> for <Okay>. you, <laughs> so no worries. Yeah, so that's something that we would discuss in, in a classroom. Okay, so do you uh, analyze several aspects of the business? Uh, is it, um, if I understood correctly, then uh, you focus, for example, on the, the law, economics, uh, and uh, web psychology, and the business part of the, uh, of the business. Right? Exactly, all those four uh, areas are very important to us, and you have to have some knowledge of them. Mm -hmm. um, but we always say that uh, ITRM is really about combining psychology with business mm -hmm. and so a lot of our students are very passionate about people and psychology but they want to look at that topic from a very practical point of view and they want to do something with their knowledge and their experience uh, and that's that's where um, IHRM comes in where you very practically try to uh, use your knowledge of psychology um, for for business purposes so um I guess in the program, uh, students will learn a lot about uh, the different aspects of the business. And so is it just enough to go to the management board and say, okay, I want to implement this change for employees, yeah. or also maybe I should look at the financial aspects behind? Yeah, so yeah, that's exactly what our students do. They, they are uh, a sparring partner for management and um, they have a very high position in, in a company. And more and more you see in industry that uh, HR is seen as a very important topic um, that, that needs to be taken very seriously. So um, yeah, so our, our um, professionals come to management with their solutions and their ideas. And together they figure out the best way to steer the company forward. Okay, so you analyze several aspects of like the, the business life, but how is actually the program uh, structured? Yeah, so we have uh, a very interesting program. In the first two years, students get all kinds of courses in all those fields, law, psychology, business, uh, economics, to get a good understanding of um, our field. Yep. Um, and then at, by the end of year two, we have a practical quarter, which I'm very passionate about. It's where students very practically, they go outside of the classroom and they work on real life cases with companies uh, and they come up with all kinds of creative solutions there's a lot of freedom and they work together on these uh, assignments and um, actually we have a student we ask people what they think of it and it's actually something that they're very passionate about so uh, I'll actually want to show a video of Bakker explaining how he likes the practical quarter yeah willingly If you really want to uh, study something which is really practical and something that really will get you to see from a different perspective, not only yours, and to see the world from a different angle, then you should really pick IHRM and also you should come to Saxion because it's really practical. Thank you, Baka. So, yeah, we have just seen what it is uh, uh, to do the practical quarter, the IHRM program. And do you also have uh, something, uh, some other practical project maybe? Exactly. So after the practical quarter, um, year three starts. Mm -hmm. And that kicks off with labs, as we call it. And That's those a very strange name. Like, I know. What can students expect from it? Yeah, it sounds very technical. It's yeah. not, per se, uh, for us. Um, but it's basically an experiment room where students work together on uh, answers uh, for questions that come directly from industry and there is a lot of room to work together to network uh, but also to use your creativity uh, and um, ideas to to solve issues that are not clear-cut and that are quite complex and um, students work on these different fields like uh, leadership for example uh, there's a business related lab we also have one on innovation and entrepreneurship 
Uh, so students come up with their own individual uh, ideas and uh, that's interesting so that's half a year mm -hmm. and then they get to the minor part and that is all about talent management and uh, human resource development so really understanding how to to get the most out of people to develop them um, that's what uh, our uh, third year is also about and then after that the fourth year is practical so they go on their internship and they write their thesis yep. and they get the opportunity to go abroad for a full year um, and uh, work on uh, yeah work for really major uh, names in uh, in well wherever they want in all kinds of uh, countries like we have people in New Zealand at the mm -hmm. moment or New York um, yeah whatever you're passionate about yeah okay very nice and uh, I asked the same question to Enko before so I want to ask the same to you uh, can a student go to their own country for oh. the internship or the thesis uh, in the company? Absolutely, so a lot of students do that. Uh, mm -hmm. So their entire fourth year can be done from their home country. Um, so if they find an, a good business uh, opportunity there, uh, that's absolutely possible. Okay, yeah, sounds great. But what is actually the atmosphere of the uh, IHRM program? Do you also have like uh, several uh, cultures uh, in the class and also among the staff? Yeah, absolutely. We have a very mixed uh, cultural background in our staff, but also in our students. Uh, so many nationalities work together. And I think what makes us really special and what I love about teaching also in the program is that um, students uh, are very close. We have a close-knit community. Uh, they get to know each other really well because we spend so many courses on, like for example, group dynamics, uh, psychology, getting to know yourself. Uh, we have really intensive coaching, also because coaching is an important part of, uh, of being an HR professional. So we spend a lot of time getting to know ourselves and getting to know each other and form a really interesting community. And we organize all kinds of things, like uh, just uh, a few weeks back we had an uh, international dinner where students cooked uh, dishes from their home country and in our um, um, well offices we shared the food and had talk and played games and uh, got to know each other so that's staff and students together yeah you used a very uh, specific word uh, like intensive coaching what is that what is it actually yeah so students get assigned an individual coach mm -hmm. and um, f from our staff and they sit together a lot talking about uh, how stu the study is going, but also what their ambitions are, or what their fears are, or what they like to do with their studies. Uh, and so you have somebody to talk to, and to uh, that, ha that helps you and coaches you to get the most out of your studies. For example, do something extra. We have really interesting honors programs. If you want to do something extra, um, because you have time to spare, and you, um, you want to do uh, something that challenges you even more, then there are options there, and your coach can help you um, well, find those options. Yeah. Okay. Um, I actually have a question still related to the, the coaching part, because I can imagine a lot of international students come from uh, an education background where there is a lot of theory, mm -hmm. and the program seems to be, to be very practical. So, um, does the coach also help uh, getting into this kind of working mindset? Yeah, absolutely. I think we, uh, we pay a lot of attention to that. We even mm -hmm. have a course specifically, uh, it's called Learning at Saxion, and it helps uh, you as a student in the very first quarter understand what it's like to study with us and what our program really expects of you and how it's maybe different from what you're used to. So, we really help students to get adjusted to uh, what it's like um, being here. Yeah, great. And um, what are you most proud of? Oh, I'm proud of many things. But I think um, what I really love about our program is that ISRM is unique in the Netherlands and it's unique in Europe uh, because studying this specialized direction uh, for four years um, full time is, is not something you can do many places. Often it's seen as an, a separate thing. Um, and for here you really focus on psychology and business together uh, for four years. Um, and that we're very international, uh, that we all our subjects and our uh, courses and our cases uh, have these international aspects to it. Um, and that we're really close as a, as a community. I yeah. think those are things that um, will re really make it worth studying with us. Okay, so I think we got uh, quite a big overview of the program. Is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, I think that's, uh, this covers uh, yeah. some of okay. the important things. Perfect, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And we will now sit together with uh, Robert Slot and a student from uh, International Finance and Accounting. Thank you, Janina. <laughs> My name is Victor Imakwede Kalo. I am from Africa and I am currently studying International Finance and Accounting here in Saxion University of Applied Sciences. I got into Saxion in 2016 
and I'll be graduating in 2020 hopefully. I was actually looking for finance or an accounting or a number related study and my family by force came, uh, came up with uh, a, a, a study from Saxion that they find a finance and accounting study which if I would like it I was like whoa really like I've never seen a school that offers finance and accounting put together and thanks to Saxion who has made education and becoming more internationalized very easy and by offering us a scholarship an ESTS scholarship it's very 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 different in Nigeria, you don't have digi digitalized learning. In the Netherlands, you have digitalized learning. And the teachers here, they are just like a friend and they are ready to motivate you. They are ready to, to, to stand by you, to teach you as fast as it it's your learning growth. Take it from me. It is It pays to study international finance and accounting. If you're that kind of a person who is very keen to details and you are passionate with numbers, the world is changing. Companies are internationalizing. The companies need you. I would say international finance and accounting here in Saxon is for you. Most memorable experience here in Saxon is getting to know new cultures, new people. And here I found it in Saxon. My next step is actually going to Belgium for my minor. IFA has made it possible, has given us a platform to be able to study at least a semester abroad, uh, which I will be doing in two months' time. And I think after that, I'll be doing my internship, which I have to relate it to uh, what I actually studied in class and, and my final thesis, and then work for me. Job. Yes, job. So. We have just had uh, two very inspiring conversations with uh, Remco and Yanina uh, about two very uh, two business related subjects. So we saw like the maybe entrepreneurial aspect of the business uh, and how to uh, yeah organize the, the organization and then uh, the people related. Um, and now we are going to talk with uh, Robert and uh, Iris about uh, international finance and accounting. So. Um, how is, does the curriculum of international finance and accounting look like? Because it seems a bit maybe vague in comparison with the other programs. I don't know what to expect. Okay. Well, basically, the main uh, the main study lines, let's say the the subjects, is financial accounting, uh, management accounting, and financial management. So this is like the really um, the core, the backbone of the complete curriculum. On the other hand, we create this complete profile of a finance manager with business economics, uh, sorry, with business communications, with um, business English, ethics, uh, social and cultural anthropology. So um, if you're like a financial manager, you would become like the financial heart of an organization. It means you need to cooperate with people from very different departments and we help you creating these skills. So not only your economic no uh, knowledge, but also uh, the skills to communicate with people from different departments. Well, so being a finance manager, if it's the right word, it's, it, it is not just about being behind uh, an Excel sheet or screaming in the stock market. No, no it's not. Okay. It's like, I mean, I get a question a lot and it's, it's funny you ask. Um, um, many times the picture is created like an auditor just sitting there and um, um, presenting numbers to different people. But the idea is actually that uh, once you make your analysis and you know the story behind the numbers, that you need to communicate about it with people from different departments. Okay. So even though you make an investment plan and you need to present it to your big boss, eh, to the general manager, you need to convince him that this is the best plan actually or maybe uh, the only thing you can do to make sure you make the right investment. So the finance manager needs to act as some kind of a uh, spider on the net? Yeah, well, like I said, he's working together with uh, different departments. So mm -hmm. I can give an example, like um, uh, in, in, um, back in the days, I worked for a very big um, a taxi company and they want to invest in a new players bus for one of the soccer teams in, uh, in my hometown. And, but it's an investment of 200,000 and the marketing manager, he actually want to buy it immediately. But my, uh, my boss was, uh, was smart and he said, go talk to him and make sure, do we get enough turnover? Um, do he, does he have different customers to, to sell this bus to, let's say, to use? Yeah. How much does it cost? What is our payback period? 
those are the things you should consider before investing like $200,000, let's yeah. say. So like uh, every um, uh, branch of the net in the organization needs to cooperate well. And the finance management manager is like a uh, key for the uh, profitability of the organization also, right? Yeah, well, not for the profitability, but at least to analyze like the, okay. the revenues, the cost and yeah. everything. Uh, if you can do that like on a monthly basis or maybe with different key numbers and present it to the to the management or to the board then you know um, the the business owner will have a good insight in, in his own business and you can help him with that so this figure is in charge of always keeping track that everything goes uh, uh, according to the plans so. yeah basically you're a manager of the financial administration mm -hmm. and um, you're kind of um, um, it's not like you're in a in a functional hierarchy, you're working on that department, but you're like uh, supporting your boss in decision making, and um, uh, supporting in decision making, and like um, yeah, communicating the targets actually with the different departments. So would you say it is correct uh, to mention that it has a very uh, wide variety of uh, of functions within an organization? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, like uh, the example what you mentioned about the Excel sheet. This is one thing. I mean, you would use Excel like you do now during your study with Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever. I mean, Excel is your is your social media internally within your within your company. Definitely. I mean, uh, but we also see now is the new developments in uh, uh, business intelligence and with uh, software like uh, Power BI or Tableau, leading software packages, and uh, we teach that our students like in the, in the third year now. So despite it's something uh, new for the business world, yeah. it is something that you are implementing already yeah. in the program. Yeah. I mean, uh, from our interns, you see now already that um, the, the company coaches, they are surprised with the skills they have from Excel, definitely, but also from Power BI and, and Tableau already. Yeah. So Iris, just connecting to what Robert said, um, you are a fourth year student now, yeah. and so you have done your internship. Yeah. Uh, how uh, important did you find to have already like this uh, quite new knowledge and developments uh, uh, already for your internship time? Um, yeah, I think it's really helpful because like, for example, what he told about like the Power BI and the Tableau, like I'm now the only person that was in the company that actually could use that, um, yeah, that system. And it was really helpful for the like presenting information, uh, yeah, and help actually the organization in presenting da data better. I think overall the program has um, some really good like practical knowledge, yeah, practical knowledge which you can actually use at the company itself. You do have of course some theory that you need to learn mm -hmm. and you need to like implement that in more practical way, but like having the basics uh, it makes it a lot easier to uh, work at the company. Yeah. So, so in which year do you have your internship uh, in international um, finance accounting? So um, yeah, we actually have two options. Mm -hmm. So we can do it in the second half of the third year, yeah. or in the first part of the fourth year. Okay, so you already have like uh, quite some knowledge that you yes. can use here in your yeah. internship. Okay. Yeah. So you actually have like two and a half years to prepare yourself for the internship, and then you can like <laughs> get all your information and use it in your. Uh, and how did it feel like to be the only one in the company actually having uh, yeah. this uh, extra knowledge? Yeah, it made me uh, I, like feel more. Um, yeah, like part of the team because like I could actually give them information that was helpful for the company itself. Because yeah. uh, sometimes uh, uh, students may think, okay, I'm an inter and yeah. then uh, I will be treated like uh, the last piece of the chain yeah. and do photocopies or something. But this is something that at Saxon in general, like yeah. uh, we really care, it doesn't happen, right? No, no, exactly. Like I never felt like an intern in my company. Actually. Yeah, actually I felt like really part of the team and uh, yeah always like helping and uh, they actually really liked m like pi uh, my point of view of uh, certain things because I'm just fresh from the like study. So you have uh, indeed a positive experience yeah. with the program? Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. that's great to hear. And what actually do you like the most about the program? Mm, I like the most like the international aspect. So um, I think our class just as Janina also told is really um, like close 
and um, we actually learn together and if someone is like lacking behind we will just teach the other person as well so um, I think the international aspect um, yeah it's really the nice part like you get different points of view from different persons all around the world and it really broadens your horizon I think that's the most fun part about our study. So can we say, Robert, that you encourage peer education in your program? So students teaching other students support each other? Well, um, we don't like officially support that, but it's like um, we, we, we see that a lot. And maybe because we create kind of family. We're also not the biggest uh, academy, let's say, uh, from, mm -hmm. from Saxion. And, uh, I mean, we, kn we know all the names, we know all the faces, and uh, it's easy to bring people together. And nice. sometimes you're surprised to to see that actually students who already passed an exam help other students. I mean, you don't really promote that, but try to connect people, and that's that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. And um, what do you think is it is actually unique about the program? Um, one thing what I really liked, uh, especially also about the internship from uh, from Iris, um, is that I mean she didn't feel like an internship, yeah. And like I mentioned before, when we started, it's like we tried to create a profile, and it seemed like it came together. Yeah? She knew what to do. Uh, of course, the first few weeks you need to find your place in, in an international company, and I think you worked in an American company, was it? Yeah, yeah. an American. Company. So I mean, that's really coming together: mm -hmm. international study, uh, internship in an American um, company. Um, uh, a few highlights from uh, from IFA, as we call it, International Finance and Accounting, is we have a, a COIL program. So in the second year, we have like collaborative online international learning, which is like internationalization at home. So we work together with a group from uh, from IFA, with a group from Coventry University from the UK, and they play like an uh, online simulation about buying and selling stock trading, mm -hmm. let's say. And especially the communication part from this project is like, it's excellent. Very good experiences and even though beforehand you don't feel like there's any trouble in communication or maybe you feel like, oh, okay, it's easy, I will do it. But the way how to find each other, to work together, to negotiate, like changing the roles from investor to analyst, I mean, it really works out, uh, works out well. So this is one thing. And the second thing is we are quite proud to, to say that we have six exemptions uh, for a uh, follow-up study uh, to become like a UK CPA, let's say, to, mm -hmm. to make it uh, uh, generally known. Um, we have six, six exemptions for this program. And what is a uh, CPA? Uh, it's like uh, if you um, look, the um, uh, finance uh, and accounting is like business economics, so it's it's broad. Mm -hmm. Becoming a financial specialist, yes, but still broad. So if you like to work for a bank, it's possible. If you like to work for a big auditing company like mm -hmm. uh, Ernst & Young, for example, then you uh, need like a um, uh, follow-up study, yeah. and uh, this is one of the studies. Uh, the CPA. Have, yeah, yeah, it's like a CPA. Then you become like a professional, uh, certified professional auditor. Okay. Yeah. yeah very clear. Yeah. And uh, you both mentioned uh, communication as very yeah. important uh, in uh, your study, but also yeah. in the future job. And how is the the environment uh, at the uh, School of uh, Finance, Economics, and Management? Uh, is there a lot of diversity, for example? Uh, for students-wise, I think. Uh, like I said, we are not the biggest, uh, not the biggest academy, but I think for the different internationalities, we have like 15, uh, 15 different uh, internationalities. And sometimes, most of the times in class, it's like uh, 10 nationalities in one group. And that's, that's really nice. And do you also have some courses about uh, intercultural communication? Yeah, yeah it's like uh, social and cultural anthropology. Okay, yeah. so uh, there is the, this course specifically maybe also the interaction with uh, people, f with the yeah. students from other cultures held in an American oriented organization. Yeah, it also like just helped also in the group mm -hmm. dynamics because like first you are like wondering like why is that person uh, not the same as me for example like yeah. Dutch people are quite direct yeah. and like Asian people are a little bit more reserved and just really polite and that also makes like the communication within like maybe your group or maybe your teamwork a lot easier knowing people's strength and background it helped with um, yeah like delivering your um, like what you wanted to say 
good to that person. And I think it's also really helpful in business because you're going to deliver maybe your opinion or maybe like a solution, but if you don't deliver it correctly yes. due to yeah. cultural differences, it's going to be like yeah, quite yeah, bad for the organization. So I think those courses, but also just being in an international group really helps with uh, yeah, getting those uh, qualities. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And is there anything else that you would like to add? Well, what I also heard from the um, uh, from the other from my t two colleagues from the other uh, academies, um, um, it's like studying abroad. So basically, um, uh, we do that during a minor, and a minor is actually like if you want to broaden or deepen your knowledge about the topic. Let's say uh, you saw Janina, she is from um, uh, HRM. We also have like one course HRM, but let's say you're a finance student, and you like actually you have a good feeling about HRM, you can choose to do a minor somewhere and I just understood today that it's the only one they say is here in Holland, uh, that's fine, I mean, but you can do your minor uh, uh, in the topic of your choice, uh, but you can also do it abroad, so that's like okay. studying abroad, broadening or deepening your knowledge. And uh, it is maybe you can tell something about yeah. your minor? Um, so like for my minor I went abroad and uh, Saxion has a lot of like partner universities all around the world so you actually have like all the different universities and actually chose to study in Korea and I had like the opportunity to go from Saxion to Korea just to study there and just take some courses That's there. Yeah. yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we will also uh, talk about minor and internship and uh, other things uh, together um, with uh, the uh, teachers from the other academies. Yeah. So thank you, Robert, yeah. and uh, thank you, Yes. Yeah, thank you. Right, so we have heard quite some uh, uh, very inspiring stories uh, from uh, the three different academies. And now it's the time to actually see what the programs are about, what they are not about, and find maybe some similarities or differences. Because uh, several students are wondering like, if there is any difference between the programs. We have just seen something, but maybe you want to add something yourself. Renko, for example. Uh, what is your program about, like just in a couple of words? In a couple of words, um, those that are interested in uh, doing business in an international business context should be at IBS, uh, especially if they're also interested in the focus on conscious business, uh, which is not leading, but at least the, the main focus is, uh, is on conscious business. And of course, within our program, you can gain international experience up to one and a half years, uh, which might be crucial afterwards if you want to build an international resume. Okay. And uh, for you, Janina, about the International Human Resource Management Program. Yeah, I think if you're interested in business, but then especially also the psychology part of it, so the people part of business, if that's something you're interested in, then uh, International Human Resource Management is for you and, and unique in the Netherlands. Uh, so I think that's also a good and important part of it. Yeah. And how about the International Finance and Accounting? I think that if you're interested in uh, numbers, uh, working with money and working with people, uh, international finance and accounting is a very good study for that. Yeah, great. And now let's see what actually the programs are not about. Like, uh, uh, let's start with you, Ramco, again. I think one of the misperceptions is that if you start with international business, uh, that you can stay with us for four years and then decide during the program what you would like to do with it. Uh, people need to have that focus from the beginning. Although we give them the opportunity to, to do some like orientation, that's fine, but at least come to us with a certain passion for business and not figure it out during the time that you will be staying with us. Another thing I would like to stress out is that um, uh, the level of mathematics and statistics, it's not that hard as many of you think. Uh, you need a certain basis but you don't need to be a genius in mathematics or statistics. Because at uh, high school I wasn't myself like very good at math and so could I join, for example, the business, the international business program? If you stick to the program that we offer you, you should be doing fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for us, um, well, if you're very eager to learn and if you're open-minded, I think you're uh, welcome, uh, but don't expect the program just to be very academic. Uh, we are very practical, so if you just think it's theory, it's not. It's also a lot of practical um, assignments. Um, 
And uh, I think it's also important uh, to know that it, you don't need to have a certain level of English or mathematics per se. Um, you develop that along the way. So um, yeah, I think, um, and also one misconception is that people think it's only about recruiting. That's an important part of it, but it's much more than that. So it's not just sitting behind the desk and uh, organizing like uh, numbers related to employees and uh, do payroll, for example. No, just not just yeah. only administrative. You actually have uh, an important part in leading the business. Yeah, thank you. That goes for us as well. I mean, it's not just only sitting behind your desk working on an Excel sheet or um, uh, you don't have to be like a specialist on mathematics. And I think it's, it's any education you choose. I mean, make sure you find something what gives you energy and you really enjoy to work on and the topics uh, within that program. Yeah, and then find something that really fits your personality yeah. and yeah. not what other people think exactly. of you. Just exactly. take time yeah. to actually uh, see if you like the program and maybe uh, apply for the taster day or just come yeah. to visit the open day and totally meet agree. teachers, meet students. Yeah. Just visit Saxon if you have the chance or get in contact with us yeah. and I, everybody will be very happy to help. For also, sure. uh, if you have uh, any questions for students directly, you can refer to Into Saxon. This is our platform where you can ask uh, questions to students directly. There is no filter, so you will get very, very honest answers directly right in, into your mailbox. And um, then we talk about uh, the internship that is like uh, towards the end of the study. So first you acquire some, uh, uh, quite a lot of knowledge actually, practical and theoretical. And do does Saxion help uh, um, students finding their internship? Or like are they left alone somehow? Or is this considered as a responsibility of the student actually? Uh, we, we don't uh, actually provide the internship places, uh, so the student has to find his or her own uh, internship. But we do support them by offering them courses during the second year, uh, so we will help them how to find a proper place, help them write a proper uh, letter in order to apply for a position. Uh, so there is support, but we do consider it to be important that the student is active and proactive in terms of finding his or her own place in order to end up in a company or line of industry that he or she considers to be interesting. And it's the same for the final assignment. So we do support, but we do not provide. Yeah, okay. And that's the same also for you, Janina and Robert. Yeah, it's the same. And I mean, for students, it's like, uh, once you finish your study, you also need to do it by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good practice. And it's a, maybe they feel a little bit insecure. Of course, at that, to at that point, we are here to help. But it's their own responsibility to find a work placement, yeah. And Yelena, we said that generally at Saxion, uh, we make sure uh, that our students during the internship, they just don't do photocopying or like uh, yeah. uh, super entry level uh, uh, tasks, but actually are concerned with the business and the tasks that they uh, could see during the study program, right? Yeah, absolutely. So our, our internships are also very much uh, where students take responsibility and learn a lot. And I wanted to add to what, what um, these guys are saying is that uh, indeed uh, it's students' re responsibilities, but we do have a major uh, network by now. And I see a lot of students uh, getting in touch with previous students that are in really cool internship places and they help them get new places. So we have great uh, infrastructure, I think, within our all, all of our schools that helps students uh, get a good place. Uh, so I think what we saw at Saxion is that uh, companies are very happy with our current interns. And so then it's easier also for new interns to find a place in the same yeah. company because exactly. they see the quality of yeah. the education is really, really high. And so we saw with uh, uh, international finance and accounting, for example, the new business developments are really taken into consideration. And same is also for uh, uh, IHRM and uh, international business. So this is really, really important for a company and also to find your internship there and maybe also a thesis that comes like as the last step of your course of study. But what actually happens when the thesis is done and uh, uh, you've done your graduation, you're happy with this uh, new great piece of paper, you work really hard for it, and what's next? We see that the majority of our students, they will start working. Uh, so roughly 20% of them, they do continue with a master's degree, uh, mostly in business administration or public administration, European studies and com uh, communication science. Uh, either in the Netherlands, uh, but then they mostly need to do pre-masters in between, or they go to one of our partners in our partner network for a master's abroad, for instance in, in Aberdeen or in uh, Lisboa or at least somewhere in Europe. Um, 
So that gives them a lot of opportunities if they want to improve their skills on the master's level. Yeah, yeah. and uh, then uh, I guess that so many students go directly into the workplace. Uh, and for example, do you have like uh, some short stories or um, examples that you want to share or you are proud of from like your different academies? Uh, maybe we can start with Robert. Oh, we have like students uh, who did their internship in the company, mm -hmm. create their own opportunity did their research and advisory report, or as you said, a thesis also there, and actually halfway, they get a contract. Yeah. I mean, I think most of the students who want to work after they study and not continue like for a master program, uh, I, I can't remember one who didn't find a job immediately. And half of the time they stay at their research and advisory uh, yeah, company, let's say. Yeah, yeah, this is actually a question yeah. that we get very often, uh, yeah. Janina. Like, um, I come to study at Saxo and it's an applied university. Yeah. Uh, there's a good combination of theory and practice, yeah. but then is it necessary to do a master to find a job? No, no, no. We have uh, students choose all kinds of different directions. Like, for example, one story of uh, Nikita. She was one of our honors students. She finished uh, the program really well. She also helped design a new honors program. Um, and then she went to Hunke Miller for her internship and did their thesis there. And she was so excited about this company. It was really close to her heart. And now she has a, a position as uh, assistant to the COO, which is a really great opportunity for her. So she stayed with that company and didn't choose to do my. Uh, uh, master uh, at this point uh, but we have another story of Robert for example who uh, did his internship in Beijing then he went to Sussex for a master program and now he is a management trainee uh, so uh, yeah so there are many options there to do a master or not and it's really all about the students ambitions and passions and I think all options are good as long as they fit uh, what you want yeah indeed and is there something else that you would like to to add to this well, maybe uh, we can mention like what can, what can you become after uh, yeah, that's also yeah. uh, your yeah, question that's actually. Good. Like, I think for international finance and accounting, uh, you can become like a financial manager eh, in general uh, for business. Maybe not right after you graduate, but give it a few years. First, become an assistant, let's say, and then you're a full a full finance professional and uh, with all the responsibilities. Uh, on the other hand, if you want to work for a bank. Uh, with mortgages or any uh, financial advice also possible. Um, maybe work in a big insur insurance company, maybe work at the stock market. That really depends also on your interests. Yeah, because um, yeah. To be honest, I studied uh, business economics myself uh, uh, during the time. And even though it brought me to Hong Kong, I worked there for three years. I mean, I didn't expect that when I graduated, right? Yeah. But you will find your own path, actually, and, and choose your own career. Yeah. And uh, for you, Remco, like for uh, your program, is there any specific um, job title? I think that's, that's the hardest you. bit about our program. Yeah. I, I'm a bit envious if I take a look at my colleagues um, uh, on my right hand side. That for them, it's quite clear what you will become afterwards. And, and we are a more general type of program. Uh, in, in, in both the programs of Janina and Robert, you become a specialist. In our program, you are more like a, a general type of manager in an international business context. So we do see students ending up in business development or becoming an export manager or a sales manager. In most cases, they end up as a manager, first of all, on a junior level and later on on a senior level in an international business context. So it's not that fixed, but at the same time, that gives you also possibilities and opportunities to develop yourself in the area or domain that you feel passionate about. Yeah, and uh, for you, Janina. Yeah, I think um, most often it's called human resource uh, management advisor. So that's what you start in, then you become manager. Uh, but also change agent is, is a position that we see students end up in. And even something like chief happiness officer, where you're yeah. responsible to make sure the employees uh, enjoy their work every day. So, um, but they're all related to and being an HR professional, and, uh, but it takes uh, many forms and shapes. Because I see nowadays that uh, with uh, English names for job titles, we are being more and more creative every <laughs> yeah. day. So, but I think what is very important for prospective and career students is to dream about like their future, find like uh, their path, their career, and maybe why not also just use LinkedIn and see like. Uh, how does a job description for the future position look like? Uh, which company may offer it? And then just have a, start having a goal or an idea of like 
how to become in the future because then for sure they will have uh, uh, parents, friends, grandmas and uh, asking like, uh, so what are you going to do in the Netherlands, right? So especially if you come abroad, this may be something really, uh, really interesting for you, for you to know in advance. Okay, so uh, I really would like to thank each one of you uh, for being us, uh, here with us today. And uh, if you have any other any questions, of course you can write them in the chat or contact us by uh, contact students via Intersaxio or questions about um, enrollment or any other study related subjects. You can write us on the social media, uh, for example on Facebook or on Instagram, and you find the contact details here in the video. So thank you very much, thank you. and thank Welcome. you also to you for being uh, here with us today, and uh, hopefully see you soon at Saxion. Okay. You're thinking about studying at Saxion? That leads to a lot of questions. Who could help you find answers better than our current students? On Intrusaxion, you can ask your questions to more than 250 Zaxion students. Intrusaxion is an independent platform. Our ambassadors will give you a genuine answer to your questions. programs to get a glimpse of what it's like to study at Zaxion. So are you still unsure about your study choice or do you have questions about one of our programs? Visit intozaxion.com.